Hey everybody, welcome back. Really quick today, I'm going to show you what I picked up from Freeze Right Wholesalers, and then we're going to cook some pork chops, corn, and mashed potatoes. So let's check this out. All right, everybody, welcome back. So folks, if you're not stocking up now, and I don't mean just this, I mean everything you can get your hands on right about now, I think you're in for a big surprise. I think we have some real food supply chain issues coming in the future. Uh, we definitely are having issues with wheat, with bread. With, there's a lot of things that are missing in the stores, and we're starting to see some shortages. So I think now is the time to start stocking up. And again, like I say, I'm showing you this stuff today. If you can't afford this stuff, by all means, get to your local grocery store and start buying a little extra every week and put some aside and be ready should we have those issues in the late summer. Anyway, today I'm showing you what I got in from freeze dry Wholesalers. Now, what we're going to be cooking today, and that's why we're going to go real quick through what I got in, is the boneless pork chops here. I'm going to try them out. We've not tried these out yet. The freeze-dried corn, okay, and the freeze-dried mashed potatoes. I want to see how they are. Um, I think I've tested them once before in a video, but I'm not sure. So I want to see how they are and see how we like them. All right, let's move this stuff out of the way real quick. I'll show you the rest here. Got in some freeze-dried feta cheese. If you guys remember, I was making um, the gyros or gyros, and I didn't have to use feta cheese from the store. And, of course, it's far better to be able to have the stuff stored away and use it when you need it 10 years from now. So, got that. Definitely stocking up on the pasta because pasta has been something that has been in really, really low supply lately. So, I picked up two of those. Picked up some freeze-dried mozzarella cheese, some freeze-dried chicken breast. And, folks, this is uncooked like the pork chops we're going to be doing today. If you haven't tried these yet, they're really good. Um, if you go back into my freeze-dried wholesaler videos, you'll notice I made chicken parmesan with this stuff. Comes out really, really good, and actually hydrates fairly quickly, too. Freeze-dried ground beef. Freeze-dried sirloin steaks. These are a little expensive, but they're very tasty. Freeze-dried cheese powder and some freeze-dried mozzarella cheese. And this one's different. This is the green freeze-dried whole spelt. Now, people have asked me, what the heck is spelt? Well, I'll give you a quick look at it. Okay, and I wanted to try it, and we'll be trying this out in a future video. Spelt is an ancient grain, kind of a cereal grain. that's kind of native to Europe, and it's been widely grown in Europe. And it's a type of grain that's related to wheat, barley, and rye. Okay? It declined in popularity in the 19th century. It's kind of making a comeback now as a health food. Uh, people are trying to get more grain in their diet. It's basically considered a distinct um, type of wheat. It's very high in protein, has sort of a nutty flavor, and I'm going to be looking up some recipes to see um, how we can incorporate this into a meal. It is, does have gluten in it, so if you have celiac disease or you're on a gluten-free diet, you definitely don't want to be eating this stuff. But if not, we're going to try it out and see it. We're not going to try it out today, but we're definitely going to try it out in a recipe and see what it's like. So what I'm going to do is start up my grill. I'm using my regular two-burner propane grill there with my little Walmart flat top um, a thing here, my little cast iron griddle pan here, and uh, we're going to be cooking on that today just to cook the uh, pork chops and just warm up the corn and the, the least dried hash, uh, mashed potatoes. So we're going to be cooking on that today, so I'm going to warm that up, and we're going to hydrate the food we're actually going to be cooking today, and I'll bring you right back once that's ready. Alright, so the first order of business is I'm going to preheat this. Now, for those of you wondering, I bought this in Walmart, this little griddle that goes over your camp stove. So it's very easy to light up the thing. Basically, you're just going to turn it on the stove, pick it up, light it. Do the same with the other side, like that. And there you go. Now I'm going to position it now because once it gets hot, I'm not going to be able to mess with it. Okay, so the first order of business when it comes to hydrating stuff today is going to be hydrating the freeze-dried boneless pork chops right here. Now remember, these are raw, so you are going to want to cook them. They are uncooked. I'm just going to open up the top here real quick. There we go. And I'm going to cook about four of them, I think, depending on size. Yeah, that's good. I'll do about four of them. So we're just going to drop them in the water. And believe it or not, these actually hydrate a lot quicker than you expect. Um, I thought they'd be really, really long when I first um, got them out. I'll throw that in there because I got water on it. So they actually go pretty darn quick. So we're going to kind of soak these. And I like to kind of hold them under water. You'll notice the bubbles coming up from them. Once the bubbles stop, you can kind of safely assume that you're pretty close to being, uh, being soaked inside. And then you just leave it alone. Then you'll just let that sit. It'll float to the top for a while, and then eventually it will drop to the bottom. 
and you will be good. So I just keep kind of keep putting that under there and uh, sinking it down, making sure it absorbs all the water that it possibly could really easily. And I can feel them already starting to get softer. And that's all. And honestly, if you want to just kind of put something on top of this, maybe another pot or a pan, and hold it under the water like this, that's probably your best bet. Covering it won't do much good because you're not going to get the water infused by just covering it. I'm noticing the bubbles are starting to stop. So that's almost hydrated and almost ready. I'm going to turn this down a little bit. And I have sprayed the top here with some panda stuff just to keep it uh, from sticking. Um, you can use anything you want. Normally I'd use coconut oil, but I don't have any out here at the moment, so I just figured I'd do that. Then next up, what we're going to do is hydrate the corn. Okay. Now the corn's fairly simple to hydrate, and again, it's cooked. I mean, we're just going to be warming it up in a pan back there. So that's pretty much cooked and ready to go. But I am going to open it up and put some water in with it. And if you don't want to, if you're not dumping the whole bag out, I wouldn't worry too much about the oxygen absorbers inside here. Um, but the corn, you know, you know you're going to see it if it pops out. I just leave it in there, personally. Okay, so there we go with that. I'm going to seal that back right up. Get that going. Okay. Now the mashed potatoes we're going to do separately. And the mashed potatoes are pretty much an eyeball thing. Okay. You're going to eyeball how much you want, about how much you need, and you're going to put water in. Mashed potatoes in first, a little bit of water, make it thick. You can always add more water, but you can't take more away. And once that's ready, you'll see what that looks like. So I'm going to do those last, because this stuff takes longer to hydrate. So give me a sec, I'll move that out of the way, and we'll do those now. Alright, so we got this opened. And I'm going to put a little bit in here. Now again, with this stuff here, because it's a powder, you may want to remove that just to get it out of the way, so you don't accidentally drop it in there and start mixing in water and being like, oops. There is the desk kit pack. Okay. Now remember with this stuff, it does um, grow exponentially. <laughs> I forget what they say on here, but it definitely gets big. Uh, each ounce weighs six ounces once rehydrated with water. So you don't need too much if you're only cooking for yourself. Now one of the reasons I do it this way with the stove and the burner and everything is because I'm trying to recreate what it would be like in a real disaster, power outage, grid failure, whatever, and I'd be maybe cooking in my kitchen similar to this using the stove because I have an electric stove, and if power goes out, I don't eat, so i got to have the backup. So, let's put a little bit of water in there. And again, you don't want it too soupy, but you also don't want it too thick just yet. See? I think I'm going to add a little more potato in there too because that doesn't look like a lot. There we go. All right. So you can always, like I said, you can always take, um, you can always put more water in, but you can't take water out once you started doing it. And again, these were not really cooking, and I am going to make this a little bit soupy because we want to warm it up. But we're not really cooking this stuff, this and this. Really what we're doing here is just hydrating it. So that's almost ready to go. We'll actually see how these taste. They kind of have the consistency. I don't know if you guys have ever tried potato pearls from the LDS stores. Um, they are really, really good. Uh, they're like the best mashed potatoes I've ever tried, instant ones. And uh, they kind of have that consistency, so we'll see how they taste once they're warmed up. So I'm going to make this a little bit soupier because, remember, we're going to be heating it up, and I don't want it to be really hot and get really, you know, congealed and nasty. So we're going to make it a little bit soupier because we're going to warm it up. We're going to warm up that stuff over here on this side that's a little bit lower. And we're going to cook our pork chops over on that side. So let that finish hydrating. Let me finish up this. And I'll bring you back when we put them on the grill. All right, so the pork chops are pretty much hydrated, as you can tell. They're all ready. Nice and soft. So we're going to kind of wring them out. <laughs> I try to get most of the moisture out of them as best I can so it doesn't just poach them when I put them on the grill. And we'll put them on the grill here. There we go. A little bit of salt and pepper. There we go. A little bit of garlic, a little bit of onion. There we go. And when I flip it over, that taste will come through it. You know, I don't like to overdo them. There's another one. I'll put him on there. That's why I like to wring them out, because if they tend to get a little bit heavy with moisture, 
I'm also putting a little bit of this in my corn too. I put a little bit of garlic and onion in the corn too. We're just slowly heating the corn up over here. I mean, this is on really, really low. We're just kind of warming it. No real need to go crazy with it. These two are almost hydrated, almost fully hydrated. I think that one's almost ready. A few more minutes. They're a little bit thicker. Actually, that one's ready to go, so we'll put him on there. I'm going to turn this up a little bit. I have to look and see. There we go. Okay, so we'll do a little salt and pepper on him. And it's this simple, folks. You know, this grill here was, I think, nine bucks. This was a, you know, the actual stove was a uh, thrift store find for, I don't know, eight bucks, five bucks. I forget what it was. I basically took it home, cleaned it, repainted it, and it was ready to go. So there you got a backup emergency cooking system for yourself and a way to cook your food. See how this guy's doing here. There we go. That's pretty good there. That one needs a little bit more on that other side. Yeah. There we go. So I'm just going to let those go for a little bit. We'll wait for that last one to be ready. And uh, we'll bring you back when they're fully cooked and ready to uh, dry out with the um, mashed potatoes, which are going to go on here in a little bit too, once I get a little less uh, pork up there. And we'll warm everything up this way, make it real easy and simple for you. And this is an awesome way to make an emergency meal during an emergency situation and have it taste pretty darn good too. All right, give me a few minutes, we'll bring you back. So just in case you're wondering how I'm doing this, as the pork chops finish, the smaller ones, I just put them up top here of the larger ones that still needed a few more minutes. You'll notice what looks to be raw there. That isn't, that's just fat on the end. So all in all, they're cooking up nicely, looking really, really good. We're going to wait till this kind of warms up, which is getting there. Very, very easy to do with uh, mashed potatoes. Like I said, you, you always want to make them when you're doing them like this, or if you do them over a fire, you make them a little tiny bit soupier than you want, and they will thicken up nicely, as you can tell there. And they will warm up really, really good like that, and the, the liquid will kind of congeal with everything and make it really good. So, let's give it a few more minutes, then we'll plate it up, and I'll show you what it looks like after it's all done. All right, so there is the finished result. Now, for food that's going to last for 25 years, isn't prepackaged in some bag where you have to eat what they've the menu they've designed for you. I'd say that's a pretty darn good dinner. That would definitely make a hearty meal. Let me try it out quickly. I've already tried out the mashed potatoes, and they're awesome, by the way. Um, I had to try them out as I was pulling things apart here. Let's give this a try here. Get in there. There we go. Mmm, that is perfect. Nice and tender. Mmm. Really good. Let's try out the corn. Mmm. <laughs> mm. And that came out absolutely perfect. And whatever end you're slicing it on, you can see it slices up nice and tender very easily. Not a problem at all. That is really, really good. It's amazing that um, something that was hard as a rock about mm, 10 minutes ago is now nice and soft. So, that is the pork chops from freeze-dried wholesalers, as you can see here. Mashed potatoes and the corn. I added a little stuff to the corn to make it a little tasty. The mashed potatoes are absolutely awesome. I'll give you a close-up look at them. Mm, they are great. The pork has came up perfect. Nice and well seasoned. So I'm really impressed with it. It looks like I'm going to have a good lunch after I clean up my mess out here. And don't forget, folks, my link down below um, for freeze-dried wholesalers will save you 15%. So if you're kind of on the fence about doing this and trying it out, you can save 15% to start with. And if you're already stocking up, like I know a lot of you folks are, uh, on some really good quality clean food. I mean, there's not a lot of stuff in this. I, I, can, I can show you the, the pork chops here. Where's the ingredients? Okay, ingredients. Boneless center cut pork chops. That's it. No artificial ingredients, minimally processed. So, as you can see, this is really good, clean food. There's not a bunch of junk in it. There's not a bunch of processed stuff in it. And all in all, I got to say, for a quick little meal that I threw together here because of this video, came out really, really good, and it's really tasty. So, if you want to eat good after a bad situation, this is definitely the way you can do it. And you can save 15% using my link down below for freeze-dried wholesalers. Anyway, folks, don't forget to check out all our other links as well. We have our affiliate store, our My Patriot Supply link. If you're interested in getting some long-term bulk storage, got $150 off three-month pack there. And our Thrive Life freeze-dried food as well. 
Thank you for watching, folks. Get stocked up because I think we're in for some rough times. Stay safe and stay prepared.